Are you overwhelmed by all these tech tools for academic research that come out on a weekly, if not daily basis? Well, I think you are not alone. And I think, don't get me wrong, these tools are amazing. I love to try these things out and I'm not anti-tech by any means. But I think there are certain dangers that you should be aware of when it comes to this barrage of new potential tools to use for you as a scientist. Be it time management tools, creativity tools, citation tools, literature searching tools, um, and the list is endless basically, and also tools linking tools. You run into the danger of procrastination with tech. Tech procrastination, I think, is a real thing. I've, ob I've observed it myself, <laughs> um, in my case, that there is a certain fascination and a certain attraction for these tools and you, you know, very easily can go down basically a rabbit hole. You watch another YouTube tutorial, you subscribe to another newsletter, you read more about this, you try this out, you try that out, you use that as a plugin. And so it can very easily, I think, lead to procrastination <laughs> where you actually aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing which is about thinking about your research doing research in the lab or whatever is your field and so i think this can be actually a huge distraction so what should you do i think this is not so easy because at the same time you know it is good to explore new tools how they can help you in your daily life how they can make it maybe make you more efficient more productive more happy but there is a limit so I think it's good to try some things out, but then if it doesn't work for you, don't feel the FOMO of not using this tech tool right now because many others in your Twitter bubble or wherever do it. These tools may be useful for some people, but maybe this tool is not for you. Maybe you're doing just fine. I mean, I started using a reference manager two years ago. I'm <laughs> not ashamed to admit. Now that I use one, I don't want to go back because this has really made things better. But it also worked beforehand. Um, I'm currently, <laughs> I've been going down a rabbit hole with note-taking apps. I, I don't use any. I just write things down on paper and then when the paper is full, I regularly recycle the paper. And so I don't think this is a very good way of doing it. And I've, I've been looking at some of those note-taking tools and maybe I will end up using one of those um, apps because I really believe they can help me organize thoughts better. But at the same time, I don't think that's what limits me. Uh, what, what limits me is like quality time that I can dedicate to thinking about a particular topic or to do research on a particular topic that I'm interested in. So I think this is maybe a good way to think about it. Which, which thing really limits you the most? And I doubt that in a lot of cases this will be solved by using a new tool. So I think the tools can really help you. I don't want to deny that and I use them myself, but I think you should rein in <laughs> like the time and energy spent at looking at all these tools as fun as that is, uh, because in the end they will not do the work for you. You have to do the work. So I'd be curious to <laughs> find out what you think about this. This was kind of a bit of a ramble, but I feel that a lot of people out there, including myself, kind of feel the pressure with um, all these new AI tools, for example, that are coming out right now to try out as many of them, to sign up for as many things and to spend actually a fair amount of your day playing around with these tools when in the end actually what you're doing is already just fine and you may be limited by other things. So let me know what you think in the comments. Um, love to hear from you. And with that, thanks for watching this. See you in the next video. Bye.